for the folks on camera. This is called down tuning. So that you can sing flat? Yeah, so I can sing flat. No, so I can sing. My voice is gone. Mm -hmm. There's me at 22. With my grandmother in my wedding dress. I'm not sure what we want the overall like message to be, but I was thinking if we do a um, like the freedom for everyone to marry, so like a gay marriage message as well as the underlying like you know shadow side gay divorce message. The pro same sex marriage, mm -hmm. and I'm feeling almost like I want it. More fitting given the poem and the, mm -hmm. to maybe just have it all in red or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it almost looks yeah, but and I wasn't sure if he wanted it to be have carry that message of same sex equality or if he wanted it to be more personal, like it doesn't matter the sex of it, betrayal is betrayal no matter what sex it is. Right. Right. But it might be interesting to have some kind of rainbow thing on there well, somewhere. <laughs> and that's where I was thinking yeah. about the ribbons. The other thing with the ribbons is we can paint the ribbons themselves gradually, but they like in a way they're they're detached, they're added onto the dress itself. Mm -hmm. Because when I got the box from Ann Jennings, mm -hmm. she told me to write down my initial thoughts. Mm -hmm. And this is what I wrote. The picture of the woman in the dress, because there's a picture of somebody mm -hmm. in the dress, um, or a dress similar, makes me think of our town, a ghost bride, mortality, youth, hope shrouded in the reality of the ephemeral nature of time. Is a veil, a wedding dress, a kind of shroud? Which is, sure you have the Sylvia Plath thing, you know, marriage contract is a death contract. Oh. Wow. That was asked for <laughs> So, um, if we're going to go with a sense of betrayal and wanting to portray that visually, we can have the poem start off strong and precise and very much uh, like the dress off white and pristine and all the lettering very precise and black and slowly it's going to get muddier and dissolve and by the bottom of the dress we can have the whole bottom of the dress like blood red and tattered up a bit so it's like the gradual descent from like purity to complete and utter ruin which would be visually yeah. amazing. That's great. So I and love that. Is that and I can do that aesthetic like, where we can almost make the bottom of the dress look like not entrails, like, per se, but, you know, like, that, like, raw, me, like, totally torn apart look. Like, Lady Gaga? <laughs> oh, no. But it would slowly, like, seep up, almost like it was crawling up the dress, and so then everything would start off very much, like, controlled. And yeah, controlled and right out, and then finally, by the time it got to the bottom, it would just be, like, more haphazard, and the words would start to, like, almost bleed off the page. Okay. Right. And there is this, like... Almost like this effect, but if it's just in the words itself, it's not in the background. Right. And the words are going to be close enough together, I think, that I'm probably going to take them close enough. But they're that way you have that sheer overlay of, oh, no, I'm all controlled and everything is fine. But once you get underneath everything to the heart of the matter, yeah. it gets completely screwed up. Okay. So I what like I'm wondering, material-wise, okay, so do you think you can paint on this? I can paint on it, yeah. Um, I don't know. How, well, we'd have to put layers in between, obviously. Yeah, we we could, I could get some plastic it. underneath. Um, but I think Sharpie would, I mean, we could do a test blotch, but Sharpie would bleed everywhere because of the nature of the fabric. Okay, well, so it would have to be paint. Do you know what? Is it makes me think of a period? Um, <laughs> you know, play on the idea of a period. Yeah. And then by the time we get to the bottom, it's sort of like when a woman has yeah. had her period and, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because what we're going to do is we're starting off with really controlled black lettering at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And as we go, it's going to morph into red lettering, and then it's going to get really yeah. mushy oh. and almost bloody at the bottom. Yeah. I secured these brushes from uh, Annie's art classroom. Oh, <laughs> the blue ones, yeah, the blue ones are all from from my AP art project, when basically she cut me loose and was like, dude, you're not doing any of the work we're doing class, you're going to sit in the corner and paint because this is something special. Listen, so. you special person. You I was a special person. I was see. the first person in 20 years to submit an AP art portfolio to the board. And did you get credit? AP art. I got AP art credit, and um, in addition to that, I got a four on it, I think. So it was, you know. Spooky. Good boy. 
by my speeding car, comma, to be eaten by ants, comma. Mm-hmm. I'm going to know this poem back and forth. You know, I submitted this poem to um, a publication in England that prints mm -hmm. only long poems. Oh. And Al Young said, oh, they're going to take it. I think they're going to take it. Which publication is that? Forget the Where are you at? Let's see. To be eaten by ants, comma. To be eaten by ants, comma. And then that's the end of that line. Describe the way that this song makes me feel. As though an infant drops to a tapestry pillow in the smallest aromatic house, anchored to the continent's edge, viewed from the fullness of the moon. As though the new moon moves through viscous space, opaque and hushed, dappled with deliberate opalescent molecules. As though molecules fatten, extravagant and simultaneous, in everyone's abundant palms, blooming like supernovas. So that's what the poem, the poem feels like that to me. Like blooming like supernovas. Um, abundance, <laughs> abundance somehow. But it's also very sad. It's sad and eerie and haunted and feels like outer space to me, kind of. <laughs> um, outer and inner space. Ha! You would have been so proud of me, Kate. Hey? I made my audience cry. You did? Mm -hmm. How How'd you do that? She pulled the nails. You started to choke up? Yeah. <laughs> I knew that's what a nils, pulling a nils was. <laughs> it was this one that I hadn't shown anybody. And, uh, TJ after was like, where did that come from? 
I haven't seen that one yet. You're like, never mind, I so, never want to show it to you. Before. What was it that choked you up, do you want to say? Um, no, it was uh, it was my poem Confirmation of Adoration. Mm-hmm. And so it was just this, like, it's the turn in the poem. It's the, the moment when it's like, shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it was, mm. it was... Don't you love it when, when your work and others' work takes you by surprise like that and you all of a sudden yeah. just get emotionally... Well, I don't. I'm not. You can attest to that. I don't ever... Like, so why not you, with work anyway? Why do you think it happened to you that night? Just the intensity of the night? I think because I hadn't shared it with anybody, and yet here I was debuting this like super super personal poem in front of like thirty five people. How green was it? I hadn't touched it. I wrote it down. I hadn't touched it, but it stuck with me, so I memorized it. And I just I don't know. It was one of those things I just finished doing like a super long poem, and I needed something a little bit more edgy. Confirmation of adoration. Please don't call me beautiful unless you need it. I need to know if I'm wasting my time. I don't have time to waste on you, only with you. And I'll wait if you ask me. I'll be a patient woman in an impatient world. I'm not the type of woman who waits on a man, but I've stopped for you. I've paused for you held your eyes for more than a second. You're my exception to the rule, but I need to know if I'm yours. I need to know that I'm worth the risk. You're like poison or heroin or any other number of intoxicating but ultimately toxic cliches. You make me want to be a cliche. You make me want to tie myself up and the apron strings of sexual stereotype, white picket fence, 2.5 kids, golden retriever, that cliche that makes me want to slip my wrist. I would do that for you. I would, 
I would dye my hair blonde. I would rub your feet. I would cook you dinner, and I don't cook. But I hope you wouldn't ask that of me. I hope you'd see me for what I am, and that would be enough. Please, let me know that you love me for me, for what I could be to you, or for what I already am, and was, and have been. Mm. And that's the one that... That's the one gotcha. that... Gotcha. It was right at the butt. I said butt, and I was just like... Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I started getting all like... Shit. Not only is that a good poem, the performance of it is phenomenal. I mean, I really, you can just feel the... It's a little bit different when I'm actually up and I'm warmed up and everything, but yeah, I was doing, was... like, making eye contact with people and holding their eyes on the whole yeah, thing. It made me hold my breath. <laughs> <laughs> I realized at the end I exhaled. <laughs> the only person that heard it, I was in L.A., actually, with my friend, um, Robert, and it was driving me nuts because it was in my head. And he's like, you know, what's going on out there? Because I was just, like, thinking, po like, all weekend I was just poetry, poetry, poetry. And so, you know, he's like, and I was like, there's this poem that I've got here in my head, but I can't share it, you know, at all. And he was like, it's like, you know, I won't look at you, but if you want to say it, that's, you know. And so I was, like, curled up on his chest, and I said the poem to him, and he was just like, I wish that was about me. He's like, I, you know, the idea that you wrote that about someone is just, like, it's too much, like, you know, he was just like, I would kill to have a woman feel that way about me, you know? I was like, oh, okay, yeah. But only the men that don't care that women feel that way about them get that kind of poem written for them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's it's and then, not exactly the kind of poem you want to be written about, sort of. But. Well, I mean, but still, like, the... No, I know. You know the guy it's about, and it's just... Yes. I... I if I send it to him, I mean, if I send him the video of me reading it out loud and everything, I don't know if he would even... That might be a little nervous splitter. <laughs> he, he would... I don't would know what he, 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 he would do. I don't know what he would do. Say, uh, oh, say, oh, oh, would you write that about? <laughs> no, he, he knows. He knows. But I don't know what he would do, so... Let me say Wow. Thank you. Thank you. It's difference between this and this. All we need is just a little patience Set sugar, make it slow And we'll come together fine All we need is just a little patience Sit here on the stairs Cause I'd rather be if I can't have you right now, I'll wait here Sometimes I get so tense, but I can't speed up the time But you know, love, there's one more thing to consider Said woman, take it slow and things will be just fine
and all that, what I should do to keep, should I? Just don't worry about oh. it. Just throw this paint okay. away. Okay. And I'm, Yay. I'm just going to take my paint and my brushes with me. Okay. Or maybe I'll leave brushes here and I'll leave paint here. Yeah. Um, but Because I might, I don't know, because at this rate, it's going to take you like 50 years to do it, don't you think? No, it, it'll take you 50 years. I think that if we had, a, you know, a day, like a whole day, I'd be able to finish it. Over. Yes, princess. Okay, I'm done. well then maybe what I'll do for now is just well, go ahead and go ahead and take your stuff with you because I don't know if I'm gonna since yeah. school starting if I'm gonna have time to do anything between now and when school starts. So why don't we maybe plan on a day yeah. coming up where we'll have more guitar, more cowbell. Yeah, you are way more than moral support, I'm sure it bugs man. Her quite a bit, so. What was that? <laughs> I'm sure it bugs her quite a bit. So. <laughs> she needs ease. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's not my yammering. <laughs> it's something completely different. Okay. A xylophone. A xylophone. Where's the xylophone? You hear a xylophone? You see a xylophone? No, it's my phone that's going on. Oh, it's a phone. Yes. I'm not on the street yet because I had to put my art supplies away, but I will be down there in a second. Just like. I'm gonna be on the left side of the street, but you can't turn up the street because it's a one way street.